Hi, everybody. Hi. Uh, my name is Dom Felix. I uh, see a lot of familiar faces and a whole lot of faces. This is fantastic. Um, I, was, uh, I was raised a criminal. Um, that's just how my house was. Um, it was, seemed normal for me that um, all my parents' friends were really customers, too. That's just kind of how the, the household was set up. I was, uh, I remember being taught in the second grade not to trust the police. There was a, a big discussion about how they were just people um, and they had a job, but they were to be treated like strangers. Maybe everything they taught me wasn't all the way wrong. But, um, so uh, I ended up getting in trouble early. Uh, I got my first felony at 15. I sold some pot to a police officer. Um, I broke into the school drunk. I, it, started, it started pretty early, and almost everything was around a growing addiction that I had uh, I nurtured over about 25 years. Um, as I went through the system um, for the first sales, I did treatment at daybreak. Um, for my first DWI, uh, it was abstemious. Uh, my first domestic violence was Colonial Clinic. Uh, this list could go on and on and on. It's really, it's really pretty ridiculous. You notice there's firsts beside all those. There, there's multiple of all of those. Um, I always felt forced to do the treatment, um, and I resisted the change. I, I, I didn't trust it. I didn't. It just didn't. It didn't feel right to me. Um, I learned a lot of tools because I'd finished the treatment. I'd go do it because I didn't want to go to jail, but I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't learn how to use them. So in 2003, I got in trouble for selling methamphetamine. That's kind of what I did. That was my MO. Um, and I did treatment through the prison system. I did a DOSA, drug offender sentencing alternatives. Uh, and it was a really there was a lot of treatment. It was long. You did it while you were, I did it while I was in prison. Um, and I was ready, I was starting to be ready to change. I wanted to get out and succeed. But that treatment didn't transfer once I got out. Once I got out, I was just out and I had to report and that was all there was to it and I failed. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't ready to do it on my own. Um, so I got in trouble again in 2006 for meth sales, because that was my thing. Um, and the, uh, the prosecuting attorney said that they weren't going to spend any more money on me. She was convinced that I had uh, become a professional at navigating the system and using treatment to stay out of trouble. And uh, I mean, it really didn't seem like that to me at the time, especially that last time. I'd really kind of tried, and I did well for a while, and then I just failed at the end. But I did finish the DOSA sentence while I was out on bail for the next sentence. So they kind of they kind of bled together. I can see how she kind of thought that. So she said there would be no treatment. The, the court system wasn't going to waste any more money on that with me. And uh, so when I went to prison, I was I was kind of hopeless, and I was looking for anywhere I could get help. When I was in there, and I, I ended up uh, going to an NA group. Uh, we went down to the cafeteria. There was, I don't know, maybe a half a dozen guys sitting there. And I'd been to N.A. The judge had told me to go to N.A. before. And uh, I was convinced everybody was lying about getting sober there, because why would anybody really want to get sober? And when I got down and I started talking to these guys, there was a, there was a full-grown man there, and, and he was crying. And he was talking about his kids, and he was talking about interacting with his family. He was getting ready to get out, and he was crying these just hot tears of rage. And he looked over at me, and he's like, and I don't even know this guy, and I can't believe I'm crying in front of him. And I was just blown away. I couldn't even, I, you know, this was something that had never gone on in any of the treatments or, or NAs that I'd been in before. And uh, I, I figured out that he said something about learning how to feel, and I realized that I'd lost the ability to feel. I'd messed with my, with my emotions with drugs so much that I didn't know how to feel anymore. And I, I started doing a lot of work on figuring that out again, on figuring out who I was and going back and feeling events that had happened before in my life. And it was a pretty long process. Um, so it seems backwards. When there was treatment, I failed. When there was no treatment, I came out and I, I like to think I'm a success story now. Uh, I got a bachelor's degree. I'm working towards a master's. Um, I worked to...
I want to use these degrees to help felons re-enter. Um, I've done volunteer work with uh, Fulcrum, the Center for Justice, I Do the Time, Pajals, Don't Shoot. Um, and I know that incarcerating people without treatment is a waste of time and money, and there's, there's better ways to, to spend money. Thank you.